Chapter Two, The Highest Mountain at the Beach. The very next day, while we still have energy, we'll conquer the tallest mountain on Fuerteventura. The climb is 6.5 kilometers there and 6.5 kilometers back, which means about three hours to ascend and about an hour less to get back down. What should you take with you? Food, and especially something to drink throughout the day. Some sort of head covering, good shoes, and really strong sunscreen. Down here, we have to take into good consideration whether the weather is on our side. In this case, there's no risk of frostbite or general exhaustion. The only issue is that we don't want to be up there in the midst of fog and clouds. And the clouds do indeed tend to linger over the highest peak almost every morning. But today it looks promising. Let's get to it then. Conquering the tallest mountain in Fuerteventura doesn't require extreme training, any special equipment, or exceptional physical fitness. This hike is certainly not among the most fun ones. The panoramas don't change much, but conquering the tallest mountain is simply a duty to be fulfilled. It's no surprise that the path continually leads uphill and that the sun beats down the whole way. The moderate climb at the start is a bit deceiving. We actually rise a full 680 meters of elevation because we start out just a short distance from the sea. Pico de la Sarsa towers at the north of the Naturale de Jandilla nature park. It's a desolate volcanic region that takes up almost the entire peninsula. And this begs the question, what sort of a nature park is this if nothing grows here? But things do indeed grow here. Lots of endemic species of plants. In some places, fences have even had to be built. The fences aren't because of tourists, but as you might expect, since we're in Fuerteventura, because of the insatiable goats, of course. We'll get back to them later. And there's also a second and much more compelling reason to protect this landscape. It serves as a safe nesting space for birds. With Pico de la Sarsa behind us, we're at an elevation of about 600 meters, and the last 200 meters of ascent waits us. But as you can see, that 200 meter climb is on a relatively short distance, which means that the steepest part of the whole route is before us. Let's go. Every few minutes, I stop and admire the view, and I catch my breath. The sun burns the whole way, and there's nowhere to hide from it. Every time I want to elaborate on how challenging the ascent is and want to start exaggerating a bit, someone on a bicycle appears on the horizon. And it's no different this time around. How long did it take you to get up here? Half an hour? No, about an hour. But it's probably not possible to ride all the way to the top anyway.
At its formation, Puerto Ventura was the same height as neighboring Tenerife, almost four kilometers high. However, 15 million years ago, the whole island collapsed entirely. Today, Pico de la Sarsa is 807 meters high. We've spent three hours walking, and we're now standing on the summit. We're standing on the edge of a monumental, millions of years old volcanic cone that collapsed back into the ocean. Although it's not among the highest peaks ever, I certainly do feel victorious. The vast beach below us is called Cofete. I can't help myself. I just have to get to that beach. It's probably human nature. You reach the far horizon, and yet another horizon opens up beyond that, enticing you to explore it as well. If only it were possible to get there with the snap of a finger, or to drop in with a parachute, but we have to spend two and a half hours walking back the way we came. And along the way, we'll replenish supplies at the resort town of Morojable. The asphalt road ends after a bit, and it's time to slow down. Now it'll be approximately another 20 kilometers down a gravel road. Getting here isn't as much of an adventure as some travel forums might lead you to believe, but nevertheless, there are indeed some surprises along the way. At least I'll be able to rid myself of the nuts that I originally planned to feed to the squirrels. <laughs> After 40 minutes, it's finally starting to come into view. Some people recommend an off-road vehicle. In any case, it's time to check your car's insurance policy. At the end of the road, there's a large parking area, and, as throughout the island, the parking here is also free of charge. No tourist wishing to discover at least a part of the island's beauty should pass up the chance to visit the beaches of Cofete. I would definitely include a visit to this place in my top five list, to say the least. However, paradoxically, swimming at Cofete is not allowed. Don't expect any lifeguards, flags, or anything of the kind around here. There's no one patrolling anything. The assumption here is that you'll have a healthy dose of common sense. The Atlantic Ocean is unpredictable on the beaches of Cofete. There's a hard substrate sprinkled with sand and very strong, frequently changing rip currents. Swimming isn't allowed here, but nobody can keep me from cooling off after today's scorching heat. Today's bit of fun in the water is absolutely deserved. This place is just amazing. It sure is cold and really intense. You can feel it. A walk on the beach is always a powerful experience, but here you can actually hear and feel the immense power of the ocean. There are relatively many people on the beach, but even so, 
I can be alone with myself and my thoughts. The beach is so vast that everyone has as much privacy as they could possibly want. I'm not at all surprised that Cofete attracts filmmakers. The biggest film to have been shot here is called Exodus, Gods and King, with Christian Bale in the lead role. In the film's climactic scene, it's here that the sea parts from Moses and his devoted followers are able to cross. Those who perhaps don't really enjoy the beach can go on yet another hike. It's only a short distance to the village of the same name, Cofete, or they can once again head uphill. Above the beach, there's a mysterious house designed by architect Gustav Winter. There are strange stories from the times of Nazi rule pertaining to Gustav Winter and the house. He had a role in several documentaries on World War II and various conspiratorial semi-documentaries. The house stood deserted for a very long time. The current owners have made it accessible after many years and have turned it into a museum. Anyone can take the short or the long way as each sees fit. I'll certainly be staying on the beach. You can easily stroll around all day long. Cofete is a fantastic 13 kilometers long. This place was a bit of a diversion, but Fuerteventura's tallest mountain and the beaches of Cofete simply go hand in hand. Additionally, we had really great luck. For the majority of the time, there are clouds around the mountain and all of Cofete is under cloud cover. <laughs>